This is Renna from Renegade Cosplay here to do the first in a series of videos on working with PVC sheets. This first video is going to be on creating patterns for your PVC projects. First, let's discuss the materials you're going to need. The most important thing you'll need is something to make your pattern out of. I strongly recommend poster board. Um, poster board is my favorite material for patterning PVC because it acts very similarly to PVC, primarily that it bends one direction um, and it's stiff so it's harder to try and force into a compound curve which is extremely similar to the way PVC acts. So you can do a lot with poster board and then when you move to PVC it will act very similarly. So I always use um, poster board when I'm patterning my PVC projects, but you can really use any kind of paper. Um, you could use brown craft paper, butcher paper, cardboard, um, wrapping paper, any kind of paper works. I appreciate poster board because of the similarities it has to PVC. The other materials you're going to want are something to cut out your patterning material. So since I'm working with poster board, all I need are scissors. If you're working with something a little bit thicker, like cardboard, you might want to invest in a box cutter or X-Acto knife. You're gonna want a pencil, just a normal pencil. I prefer mechanical, because sharpening is annoying. And then colored pencils do come in handy, especially if you need to make um, different marks for different layers. If you have a layered piece, You'll also definitely want some tools for measurement. Um, this is my favorite ruler because it's metal and the back is cork so it doesn't slide around. I love this. But for longer ones, I have this metal yardstick. Definitely prefer working in metal just because the edges are truer. Um, you might also want to invest in one of these. This is a seam gauge and I will be using it mostly for making trims on pieces. So if you want to make an additional layered trim or border on the outside of your PVC piece, this will help you make sure that that piece is the same width all the way around. So those are the materials that you'll probably want to use. And with that said, let's get to patterning. The project I'll be working on through this series of videos is Katria's hip armor from the game Fire Emblem Echoes. And let's get started. So your first step is gonna be measurements. You're gonna need to measure roughly how big you want the piece to be. So I measured around my hips using a tape measure and then I turned it to measure roughly the height I wanted it to be from the lowest point to the highest point. Then you move over to your poster board and you're gonna cut out just a rectangle in those two dimensions. The rough length you think it's gonna be and the rough height it's going to be. Now my poster board wasn't actually wide enough to do the whole width that I wanted, um, so I did have to tape two pieces of poster board together, but that worked just fine. After you've got your piece of generally the right size cut out, you're gonna wanna just put it on your body. If you have a mannequin that fits your dimensions, that's better. My mannequin is a little off in the hips, so I decided to do it myself. Um, so you're just gonna place the piece on your body roughly where it should go, and then take your pencil or whatever marking tool you're using and just start making rough marks of where the edges of this piece should be. Um, they don't have to be perfect or precise because uh, in a minute we're gonna sit down and clean up those lines but just roughly where you'd like edges to fall if it's a symmetrical piece you only need to do that on one side which is what I'm doing for Catria so I'm only writing on my right hip um, because I'll just be able to translate that over to the left hip in a minute so after you've got your sketch, it's a symmetrical piece, so I'm folding my paper in half, and then I'm gonna clean up the lines that I drew with a straight edge, just to make them more crisp. And it does actually have a curve to it right here, it's not totally straight, so I go back in with a pencil and add a slight curve to that line. And then it's just finishing up adding the markings, estimating where you think things should fall. Um, always cut less your first time, then go back and cut more. So I wasn't sure what kind of markings I wanted on the back, so I didn't cut those yet. 
And then what I'm doing is I'm taping the edges of the paper together so that I can cut it through both layers since this is a symmetric piece. So I'm taping the edges together and now I'm going to cut through both pieces at once. Okay, now I've got the piece cut out and I'm going to try it on for fit again. So now that I like this fit, I can look, I'm looking in a mirror to see where I want that line on the back to be, because I didn't cut that corner off yet, because I wasn't sure exactly where it would fall on my body. But now that I am, I've drawn my line, I'm going to clean it up with a straight edge, tape the piece together so that they are as symmetrical as possible. What's the difference between symmetric and symmetrical? Is there one? And I'm gonna clean up this curved edge. And that's pretty much the whole process for patterning. It's very repetitive. I'm gonna show you some special cases that came up in this one now. So I had the basic shape of the second layer patterned, but I noticed that it always either gapped down by my thigh or up at my hip. There was always a big space. It didn't lay nicely against me. Um, and what I, I realized what I needed was a compound curve, which is hard to do in PVC, but not impossible. So I cut a slit in the top and had the top pieces overlap each other a little. And then I just modified that slit until I reached a point where it had a curve that ran opposite of my hip so that it both curved around and over my hip. Um, in the end, that pattern piece looked like this, and then when I form the PVC, as you'll see in a later video, I just have to bring the edges of that slit together, and I get the slight compound curve that makes it so that it hugs both my leg and my hip. Okay, now let's talk about when we're patterning the trim pieces. Um, if it's a straight edge, it's pretty easy. I use my seam gauge to make a mark at the beginning and the end, and then just connect those marks. Um, again, a seam gauge is really, really helpful for this because it'll make sure your distances stay even. Uh, if it's a curved edge, like the top of this piece, you just move the seam gauge along, making a mark every so often. Uh, this piece doesn't look curved, but I promise it is. And then when you reach the end, you just gotta do your best to connect those dots into a solid line. Now, when I finished tracing this, I realized the border looked too thick, so I went back along it later um, and just took it down a notch. And this is why it's helpful to have multiple colors of pencils, because I didn't want to take the time to go through and erase all of my old marks, so I switched to a purple pencil just so that I would know which mark was the one I wanted. And then after you've got all just the main border done, then you can go back and add your details. You'll see that I use a curved ruler. It's that clear one with the red markings to help me make um, clean curves. That's traditionally used in sewing for making um, hip lines and sleeve lines, but it works pretty well for this too. Um, I'm, you'll also notice that I'm only designing half of this because again, since it is a symmetric piece, I'll just flip it over and trace it on the other side when we get to patterning. And then after you've got all of your extra embellishment and designs traced on, then it is time to cut it out. And after we've cut it out, it's time to trace it onto the PVC and get working. If you want to see that video, you'll need to tune in next time for episode 2, which is all about cutting out your PVC.